It's finally here. Well, aside from this continuation of the service in the West, we have a long list of content changes this update. Most notably, a new class, Soulbringer. I swear to God, after half the population left from this continuation announcement, the rest of the half just went all in on the Soulbringer. And rightfully so. Shit's okay, shit's kind of OP. <laughs> In other news, we got a massive gear progression overall. Remember those days when you had limited amount of tries to enhancement limit and limit to how many times you could recover a failed enhancement? As well as nature of RNG that could siphon out of you months worth of farmed resources and give absolutely nothing in return. Or better yet, a break or irreparably damage your gear. Yeah, yeah, good times, good times. No one will ever miss them. <laughs> Rework has changed everything for the better. There are still some tweaks that need to be done, but now you can enhance as many times as you want. If you fail, equipment won't break or degrade. Instead, you'll get fail stacks that keep increasing till you succeed. Most of the resources to enhance gear are easy to acquire. Enhancing agents drop like candies from practically everything in the game now. Enhancement elements drop from far fewer places, but can still be acquired from world bosses, growth NPC, transcendent dungeons, the proper key ones, all dungeons, some dimensional bosses, and raids included. Now the funny part about enhancements about 20 is the requirement of mana control stones. These are acquired only from Alchemy Crafting Table, and as you can see, they ain't cheap, my dude. But this also serves a perfect incentive for people to get invested into AFK resource farming. <laughs> like people ain't got too much shit to farm already. <laughs> Aside from these notable changes, there are also PvP changes with a rather classy take from devs mentioning that they have um, internally confirmed that skills centered around crowd control, the transcendent type, had unintended impact that resulted in unbalanced PvP combat. I have um, two things to comment on this. First one, what took you so long? We've been externally testing out your game since last year, October, and we figured it out in just about a week. The second comment I have is on the had unintended impact that resulted in unbalanced PvP combat. If you think that's the only issue, will you have a wake-up call after one more year and figure out that, you know, that over um, 20 different sources of damage reduction, rune attributes, mana tree perks, and unbalanced class skills and high level cooldown reduction mixed in, and all of it might be a, you know, a far bigger culprit in regards of the balance issue. And yeah, um, I lied. I actually have third comment regarding the, the, the crowd control effects of transcendent skills would only be applied to NPCs. Considering only threats, the colossi types, and bosses in general are immune to CC, why would we ever care to CC something that can't even survive two hits? Oh yeah, they also added style equipment, or in other words, Cash shop item upgrade system. Ooh, pay to win. <laughs> I wish, maybe they wouldn't have to shut down the server for practicing a non pay to win model and not push out content that people would love to have, like outfits, certain type of pets, different idols, or customization options. Not gonna lie, available collection is good, but it could be better. These are the stats that you can get from upgrading them. Quite um, insignificant if you ask me. And also there is no chance in hell you'll be able to convince someone that you feel the difference from this. <laughs> Collection book got a slight facelift. Now it looks like a nightclub with neon <laughs> lights and shady businesses going on at the top. And you are correct. 
It just so happens you can get involved in style equipment salvaging process and acquire some decent stat boosts by hitting certain milestones. Smells a little pay to win, if you ask me. In other news, Realm vs. Realm, they say they improved it. <laughs> okay, in summary, Commanders got stronger, Dragon got stronger, Ballistas and Howitzer HP got reduced, and aside from other trivial things, uh-oh, what do we have here? If you didn't earn 5,000 points, well, no work and no pay. They also had a new dimensional portal that's uh, scenically set under water. It actually looks amazing. Until you need to traverse and you keep getting stuck on everything. And holy, <laughs> and holy shit, these mobs are so annoying. Abyssal Night Dungeon also got a buff. I guess? Every single transcendent equipment related crafting item now drops here. I guess it's convenient and hopefully drop rate is generous considering there were many sources and people could sell it in marketplace making those crafting materials far more common than I suspect they are going to become. Come, come, come. Right, so this goes after the update recap. Personally, while it wasn't a surprise, can't lie it felt like one. New content, new class, much desired, requested and anticipated gear progression revamp and overall progressive improvements. It felt like Alien was starting to recover from the bad launch. Even South Atlantic server opened in July and interest in Alien has been slowly increasing. Considering how bad of a timing for launch it was, we got overshadowed by New World's release from September till late November. But server instability due to the engine limits, overpopulation caused long queues, latency instability, game becoming unstable during world quests or big gatherings. Just a hint, Reason Alien, formerly Ascent, Infinite Realm, had changed its initial air combat, manamic, resource management, intensive faction versus faction conflict game is due to the limits of the Unreal Engine 3. You can still find some teaser footage on YouTube and be amazed by a large scale ship battles at around 10 FPS. <laughs> also, major game design oversight was giving out breakthrough gear pieces left, right, center for seemingly any group content participation. This confused the masses, thinking that the main gear they should focus on was the breakthrough due to the higher stats. Well, as they kept breaking one after another, and another, and another, <laughs> they were quite compelled to share their experience, oftentimes exaggerated or straight up lies in Steam reviews. But as things were cooling off, so was enthusiasm for Alien and attention shifted focus to Lost Ark, a highly anticipated and advertised mobile Diablo game hybrid with relative huge backing. One of the other major factors that escalated population loss to Lost Ark was eventual server merge in Europe and impending doom because of it. They closed all registrations to every server except one and for over a month resulting in rapid population bleed. Also I won't go into the details regarding controversy. Alien got involved due to the closure of Terra in June. At least not in this video. <laughs> So yeah, in the end, uh, Alien just happened to launch at a very bad time, had poor performance and didn't earn player base trust till uh, majority left and crowd was on the fence ever since. Due to the low population, merciless progression and lack of PvP balances, people just got tired from expecting something to change and um, there was also a severe lack of proper publisher response to any of this. So yeah. Alright then. See you around. Okay guys. Continue.